I just received this Ansonia mantel clock for inspection. A fine example of a Rococo style with two cherub characters holding the Ansonia clockworks. This model is featured in Ansonia's 1915 catalog and appeared in earlier catalogs as well. It's listed as a novelty clock and is the Bonnie model, was offered in both a one-day movement and an eight-day movement. The customer had an option to purchase two matching candlesticks. This one is identical to the Bonnie in the 1915 Ansonia catalog, with the exception of the dial on this one has a gold gilt center insert in it. The case is in excellent original condition. Designed with cherubs, garlands of roses, and scrolling acanthus leaves. The vase looks like it has a serpent handle and looks like a lakiatos vase that the Greek used to hold oil. Even the back side of the vase is detailed. Several rope tassels. The back side to one of the rope tassels. The cherubs seem to be holding the Ansonia clock in their grasps. The wings on the cherubs. Beautiful artwork here. The entire back of the case is highly decorated. The bottom has this plate soldered in place. Some white residue, probably some excess wax or furniture polish. There are areas you can see clearly, copper showing through the painted gold finish. This is a metal cast case that has been copper plated. Not sure what was used for the base casting metal. It's non-magnetic, so that rules out cast iron. It's very heavy, so could be bronze, brass, pot metal, or even spelter, which was used a lot for similar items. Here you can see the dial numbers aren't actually positioned in a centered alignment with the case. Missing one of the mounting fasteners. Crystal is in excellent shape. Nice gold gilt bezel. Customer says it runs for a short time, then stops. Oh, the balance wheel is bent. The hands are blued and the hour hand has been installed slightly off. Protect the gold gilt insert with these plastic dial protectors. Some age stains on the porcelain dial. They'll probably clean off easily. Nice gold gilt flower motif. This green color is copper corrosion from the underlying brass alloy. Here you can see where the center insert was fastened using solder through three holes in the steel dial pan. Steel dial pan has been corrosion protected using a clear coat of lacquer. Remove the winding key. Protect the back of the case from tool marks by using some thick mylar. Some steel shims to further protect the case. Pry the knob off. Someone has scratched what looks like a bee here. Tough to say. Could be Bill, Bob. Hope it's not for Butcher. The three back fastener screws are mismatched. This longer one with the small head matches the other case screw. Someone has lost one of the shorter back screws and used one of the longer case screws for it. Not a good sign. Only markings on the movement is this Ansonia Clock Company stamp. A nice gold gilt movement. This cup bearing screw head has two two mark damaged areas. Looks like someone grabbed it with a pair of pliers. Balance wheel rim has hardened oil deposits on it here. Someone has over oiled the movement at one time. The other side has too much oil on it as well. Oil is old. It's thickened to a grease. Black gunk, 
could use a good cleaning. The balance wheel isn't running true. A hair all wound around the escape wheel. Some wire on the pivots. It'll never keep time like this, yet alone keep running for long. This click spring is contacting the center wheel gear teeth. It causes friction on the center wheel and is one of the reasons for these to stop working. Small amount of movement here, but not enough to stop the clock. To mark here where someone has used a punch to adjust the side shake on the escape wheel pivot. Two marks here, they're punch marks where someone adjusted this pivot. Could use a couple of bushings here and there. The gear teeth and pinions on this movement are full of oil. This can cluck dust and eventually stop a movement. That hair has wound completely around the escape wheel arbor. The balance staff is rocking. It doesn't appear to be rotating on its center. This balance cone bearing has a crack in it. We'll need to remove the balance to see if it's a problem. Balance wheel is bent. The balance staff isn't running on its center. No wonder the customer was having trouble keeping it running. Pull this balance assembly out to see why the staff is running off center. This cup bushing is too loose of a fit. It should be a friction fit. The conical pivots should be on one continuous angle. They're both rounded on the tips. Could be excessive wear or modified by someone. This cone bearing is sure crude. The V in this one was formed by a punch. It caused the outer surface of the metal to form a stress crack. It doesn't seem to go all the way down to the inside where the pivot rides. It shouldn't be an issue. Interesting formation on this cone bearing. It'll run for a while, but it's going to need more than a cleaning for it to keep time. With it mounted in the lathe, you can clearly see balance wheel assembly has been butchered. Not only is the balance wheel bent, but the balance staff is bent as well. I'll contact the owner and see how they want to proceed from here.